Welcome to WatchGuard's Daily Security Byte. I'm Corey Hawkeiner. Today's story is the Mirai IoT botnet. A couple of days ago, I had a video talking about two really big distributed denial of service attacks, one against Brian Krebs and one against a European web hosting company. At the time, the similarities between these attacks was allegedly they both came from Internet of Things devices, mostly uh, webcams and DVR systems on the Internet. At the time, no one really knew uh, how the bad guy had gained control of these devices and was using them to do these distributed denial of service attacks. But since then, some source code has leaked on a well-known hacking forum from a gray hat hacker. The source code is basically a scanner he calls the Mirai botnet. And basically, at a low level, this is a scanner that can scan the internet for any devices that are listening with a telenet service, and it then tries 50-some different D default passwords to try to log on to that device. Now, of course, if it can log on with administrative credentials, it's going to uh, put this botnet on that device, connect home with the command and control channel, and thus allow this bad guy to actually DDoS many people. According to this particular author, at one time he was able to easily get over 300,000 victims at a time. However, since these stories, ISPs have started paying attention and they seem to be filtering Telenet and things like that. In any case, we now know how uh, this particular actor launched these DDoS attacks. And it really is kind of eye-opening and concerning that we have so many uh, Internet of Things-like devices listening on an unsecured Telenet port. So there's a couple of worrying factors here. First of all, this source code is now public, so this means that a lot more actors can start using these tools. That said, ISPs seem to be filtering this traffic. But the worst thing here is the fact that this is so easy to prevent. So the practical tip really is, if you have an Internet of Things device, you really need to firewall it. Things like Telenet should never be exposed on the Internet. Really, I wish the vendor didn't even offer Telenet. They should at least use encrypted options like SSH. But in either case, this Telenet port is probably a management port, and you can simply use your firewall to prevent external sources from accessing this port. On top of that, another practical tip is to change any default passwords. Again, vendors of IoT devices should force you to do this. During the first installation process, they should make you change these passwords. But unfortunately, some of these devices even come with hard-coded administrative passwords, which is even worse. In any case, it's a very interesting interesting story. If you want to know more details, check out the articles in the reference section associated with this blog post. And remember, firewall your IoT devices. Make sure not to allow any sort of unnecessary access to them. That's it for today's story. Thank you for watching.